Originally, this video was planned to be a review slash list of many games in the aquarium simulator genre. However, while exploring said games, one of them somehow hijacked my entire video, outshining all the others with its unique, captivating, and horrifying gameplay. Seaman. Seaman. Seaman was released for the Sega Dreamcast in 1999, and it is by far the strangest aquarium game I've ever played. Although, to be honest, it's more of a parody of aquarium simulators, if anything. It even beats out Cambrian QTS in its uniqueness, another game I was going to review for this video, which is a combination visual novel slash aquarium simulator where you have to raise this anime girl fish thing. Uh, comment down below if you want to see a Cambrian QTS video, I, I guess. Anyways, in this game, you're tasked to raise these creatures known as Seaman... Seamans. Your job is to feed them, manage their water temperatures, oxygen levels, and many other things which we'll get to later. You start off with this egg, which will soon hatch into these strange creatures called mushroomers. In order for them to evolve to their next stage of growth, this Nautilus has to eat them. Uh, I know this sounds backwards. And how do you get it to do this? No time for pingus? When did I say I had no time for pingus? What are you talking about? After a long time of doing this, the Nautilus will eventually eat all of the mushroomers. Then, after a minute or so... Oh, they're here! They're here! Oh, yeah, he's they brutally kill it from the inside, then emerging as Gilmans. This game is unique for many reasons, one of them being its usage of a real-time clock. On the second day of the game, your Gilmans should begin sucking each other's blood, slowly killing each other. This game is actually horrifying. On my first playthrough of this game, I had a hard time getting them to do this, but I later found it was because I wasn't talking to them enough. Yes, did I mention you can talk to them? This game used the Sega Dreamcast microphone attachment so that you could actually speak to your Seamans. I gotta talk to my Seamans one second. Hello? Cool! At this age, they don't really know many words and don't respond with much, but as the game goes on, their speech will evolve and you'll be able to have full conversations with them. Eventually, there will only be two seamen left, at which point you're able to give one of them a name. Okay, I'm going to let you give me a name. When you've decided what you want say to call me, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Alright then, here's how to do it. You're going to say my new name three times. Each time I say now, say the name once. Got it? Now. Uh, piss. I kept accidentally starving my seaman to death, so I had to play through this game many times. Some of the seaman's names included Poop, Fart, and Piss. You will also notice that the voices of your seamans have changed. Put this tongue in that mouth. No, what the fuck? Now that they're older, they'll be able to ask you questions, which you have to use the microphone to answer. It's rather difficult making out what's on the other side of this glass, so let me inquire. Are you a male or a female? A uh, male. You're a male of this species, eh? Yes. Well, I was hoping to meet a lady, but I guess I'm not in the position to be too choosy, am I? Some of these questions are fairly innocuous, but some are just, uh... You're in the sex industry? What? What? <laughs> no! You will also soon unlock this bug cage after a short lore dump from Seaman. Some of my memories are coming back. There was this French man named Jean-Paul Gasset who was French trying man. to raise me, and he made this cage to hold insects. Which you can now use to raise bugs to feed your seamans. I really struggled with this part of the game at first, as I didn't realize in order for the bugs to keep reproducing, you had to let one of them grow up into a moth and lay more eggs. So I kept running out of food, and all my seamans would starve to death, slowly and painfully. Somewhere around week two, but that's a very rough estimate because I really don't know. The seamans will have grown enough to where they're ready to advance to their next stage of life. And how exactly do they do this, you ask? Let the mating begin. <laughs> oh god. Holy shit, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, I can't- I can't watch, that's actually fucking disgusting. So, after that nightmarish display, one of the seamans will die, and the other one is now... pregnant. Around this point, if you wiggle a large rock in the tank, the seaman will offer to help you move it, but only if you answer his riddles correctly. Type 60 words a minute for 8 hours a day, 6 days a week. What does it have after 7 months? Carpal tunnel. 
Very good. <laughs> I was right. You can only move the rock a little each day, so it takes several days to complete this task. But once it's done, the tank will drain until there's only a small pool of water left. After this happens, your seaman will soon agonizingly climb up out of the water to lay its eggs, dying immediately thereafter. No, Bob! Now, over the course of a few days, you have to raise these tadmen, just as you did with the gillmen. It's a lot less grueling than the first time though, as they can talk as soon as they hatch, and their growth is much faster than the gillmen. Hey, if you want some action, rent a movie and lock the door. Eventually, once they've gotten big enough, they'll be able to come out of the water onto land. This is their frogman stage. This is also when the seamans seem to start asking you some deeper questions. You being the human I'm the closest to, I'd Don't really like to know what you think of this subject. More exactly, do you believe in a god or gods or some sort of supreme being? At some point around the stage, the frogman will mate yet again, except this time they both live and it's literally never brought up again, so yeah, I have no logical explanation as to why that was even added. After some time of answering his questions and caring for him, Frogman will give you a lore dump, then asking you to help him get out of the tank. I have to tell you, I've been remembering things lately. Oh. About myself and my past life and all my history. And I realize now that I need you to let me out of this tank. I have to keep growing so I can find my long lost love again. The king of Egypt back in its third lost. dynasty and been in his tank your my lover's life. father was a priest in the temple. Oh, we were young and both swept away by the passion. I'm sure you understand. Not oh, really. my dear sweet love. She was the most beautiful creature imaginable. But neither of our fathers would approve our marriage because of our class differences. When we insisted we be allowed to marry, her father consulted the god Thoth and asked him to help. Thoth granted her father's request for help and changed our physical forms. And we've been apart ever since. What? And I have to continue evolving so that I can be reunited with her in another few thousand years. Yes. I already have a plan how yeah, to get out. You go. See that ring fuck? over the tank? The I'm going is. to jump for it. Okay. When I give you the signal, I need you to say oh my jump. God. Okay. The ring Understand? Finally has re relevance. Yes. Jump. Jump. No. No. This part of the game was quite a challenge for me, as Seaman only asks for help jumping out once a day at random. I had a very hard time getting him to ask, and I ended up spending over an hour just waiting. In fact, it took so long I ended up having to end my stream and finish the game on my own at a later date. There were moments where I genuinely felt like I was losing my mind because he just wouldn't ask. I got to the point where I was genuinely starting to believe that he only got one chance to jump out. The only reason I was even able to complete the game was because I found this 5 year old Jerma stream where he recorded himself beating the game after several attempts. But even then, I still had to use a save state to do it because I just couldn't get the timing right. Although that may have had more to do with my bad microphone and ancient emulator than the game itself. I'm rearing up for it and... Now! Jump! Jump! Yes! 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 Finally! Finally! After you release the frogmen, one of them will deliver a last monologue. I have waited a thousand lifetimes for this moment. The funny thing is that it's there all the time. You don't always realize it when you're bogged down with so many other things, but you're always free as long as you're true to yourself. That's where freedom lies, within yourself. I wish you and your girlfriend the best of luck. Make sure she treats you as well as you treated me. Okay. I must be off. My evolution must continue. You know you're all right. I know we've had our differences occasionally, but I like you. You took care of me all this time, and well, I'm grateful. You've been a good friend. I'll miss our time together. Farewell.
and the credits roll. Or, in my case, the game will be unable to detect a save file. This game's use of features such as the real-time clock and especially the microphone really enhances its uncomfortable immersion. I don't like graphic sex jokes, particularly when I myself am implicated in them. I don't mind jar, box, or even avocado plant jokes, as there's an important layer of abstraction, but the actual acts described in many of Seaman's jokes disgust and horrify me in a way that I cannot possibly describe. But be careful in those chat room. There are a lot of perverts out there who'd love to hook oh, you're... up with a cute young thing like you. Ugh. 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 Don't call me that. Ew. Obviously, I know there isn't a real man-faced fish standing in front of me asking me if I'm a sex worker, but despite my better judgment, the intense feelings of repulsion never dissipate. It seems that working out and eating right are two big components of it all. Along with getting plenty of sleep and oh, sex. Yeah. But it seems that your human what body is fuck? also delicate. What the hell? Besides, it's another excuse to get naked. Well, uh, Why, listen. I am Wait. behaving saucily today, aren't I? What the human fuck? Beings. The fact that Seaman knows things about you from asking you questions makes your conversations feel so much more real. Seaman knows how old you are. He knows where you work. He knows your deepest insecurities and your greatest strengths. Seaman knows everything about you. This game has a lot of great and funny things about it. It's a deceptively complex game that really makes you think, and puts you way out of your comfort zone. However, there are some glaring issues with it that make it feel virtually impossible to complete at times. By far, the biggest issue I encountered in the game was its pacing. Now granted, my experience of the game is not representative of the average playthrough, as I was playing on stream for extended periods while time skipping on an emulator. So I imagine the game would feel a lot less tedious when experienced in small sessions each day, as it was meant to be. However, there were some parts of the game that dragged to the point where I felt like they would never progress. There were even points where I think I would have given up if I didn't already have some pre-existing knowledge of the game's general plot and how it was supposed to progress. And it's really sad, because the parts of the game that are worth it, well, they really are. It's going to sound insane, but despite how freaky Seaman is, he says some really intelligent things. Which, even though this game came out 25 years ago, I believe are still just as relevant today. Seaman talks about a lot of social issues, weirdly enough, and as I was playing this game, something about that really set me off. All the issues Seaman brought up despite this game, again, being 25 years old, are still things people are arguing over today. It really made me wonder, is our society really progressing at all? The only thing that's changed is how aggressive and violent we've gotten about our opinions. But we haven't come to any conclusions or even progressed our discussions at all. In fact, when it comes to technology and the internet, Seaman made a lot of predictions which turned out to be terribly true. There are a lot of really amazing things about the internet, but as with everything else, it's not completely perfect. You can do almost anything on the internet. Work, shop, chat, get the news, play games, listen to music, and pretty much anything else you want to do. That's all terrific, but pretty soon people won't even need to leave their homes in order to conduct their daily business. You humans are going to get lazier and less mobile. And He's forget right. how to deal with each other face to face. Okay. I think things could get pretty ugly a few decades down the road. It can be a wonderful thing. For the first time ever, people can finally communicate with each other and not have race, gender, or cultural prejudices get in the way. So in that sense, it can be a great tool for removing biases and bringing people together. On the other hand, like I said, it can be very dangerous because it removes the need to interact directly with the outside world, especially with other people. It's up to all of you humans to decide how to use the internet intelligently so that it won't harm you. This game genuinely frightens me. It's a type of horror I have never experienced before, and likely never will again. The horror of realizing that a sexual harasser fish man from 25 years ago is astronomically smarter than the average internet user today. He predicted things that we are only beginning to realize now. Why did no one listen to his warnings? Why did no one Listen to Seaman. I would also like to briefly point out that there is a shockingly large amount of Seaman merchandise. Some highlights of the things I saw being these horrific Seaman UFO catcher plushies, this limited edition Seaman Sega Dreamcast, of which there was a clear version and a Christmas version for some reason, and these Seaman bottle toppers. 
There's a lot more I could go into about this game, like the never localized sequel, or all the other merchandise, and various other Seaman related media. But for now, I'll just leave it at that. If you want to help me keep my channel afloat, please check out my commissions on my website in the description. I can draw you damn near anything, and you're free to do whatever you want with it once it's done. I also provide a bunch of other miscellaneous services like video editing, animations, 2D VTuber models, etc. Literally anything I'm capable of doing, you can pay me to do it. Alternatively, I also have channel memberships and donations, if you feel like dropping a couple bucks. Anyways, that's enough self-promotion for me. Stay safe, check data breaches for your information, keep using those ad blockers, and have a good night. Farewell. あなた自身それは世界で一番可愛い存在ですかそれとも目を背けたくなるくらい醜くて嫌な存在ですかどちらであるにせよたった一つ私があなたについて知っていることそれはあなたにとってあなた自身とは決して無関心ではいられない存在だということあなたの行く先々に必ずついてきてはあなたのふりをして友人たちと親しげに語り合っているあなたでない方のあなた夕べ大切な恋人に余計なことを口走ったあなたでない方のあなた誰かによく思われようとパーティー会場で平気で嘘をついているあなたでない方のあなたこのあなたという存在にはほどほど嫌気がさしていることでしょうでもどんなにあがいても決して逃れられないそうあなたはそんなあなたに囚われた囚人なのです。